Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to Pie in the Sky Tours, your one-stop shop for all things Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 with a focus on VR. In today's video, I'll be taking a more detailed look at the performance I'm getting in VR with the intention of setting some more benchmarks to compare against when I update the sim next week. The last video made for some great discussion in the comments, so I'm keen to showcase another one before Sim Update 6 releases on Tuesday. You will notice that I have recorded the video in the native view taken from the digital representation of the Reverb G2 VR headset. I've kept it as default to best illustrate the performance I'm experiencing. And please do remember guys to subscribe to the channel for the latest Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 VR tutorials, demos, discussions and more. And please do smash that like button if you enjoy the content as it really helps boost the channel to reach other simmers. In this test, I'll be using a benchmarking tool called CapFrameX to measure the 1% and 0.1% lows in VR and not just the average frame rates. This enables us to try and get the most consistent frames with minimal variance between each one, which is what we want for the smoothest performance. So we're not just looking at FPS, we're looking at the average frame times based on the lowest readings. The tool measures the slowest 1% of frames based on their frame times and averages those frame times and displays that value as a frame rate. This is done for both the lowest 1% and 0.1%, which basically shows the worst parts of the performance. We then compare these readings to the average frame rate and we look at the differences between those numbers. The larger the gap between these frame rates and the average frame rate, the worse the performance. So what we're looking for here is small differences between these numbers. I want to thank Hank McShane for recommending me this tool. It's proving to be a really good addition to my toolkit for these demos, so thanks for that Hank. This is something I'm going to be experimenting with more and more, and I think it'll be really useful for future content. I'll use this tool to benchmark and further tweak my settings to get the most consistent performance for VR. Hopefully by sharing these results with you, it'll help you dial in your own systems too. Today we're flying the Cessna 172 over Mumbai in India. I wanted a complete contrast from the last video, which was set in Argentina, because I want to showcase different scenarios in the sim, and as we all know, performance varies based on what you're flying and where you're flying. So it's always good to show variety when we're doing these tests, and these can be applied to different aircraft in different locations. And for my latest VR settings, please click on the link above for more details. I'm continuing to use 80% render in OpenXR and 80% render in the sim for this test. I also plan on using CapFrameX to dial in my best settings after the update, and I'm hoping the render scales can both be increased with better clarity, fingers crossed. Now let's have a look at the CapFrameX software. I ran this test for about five minutes. Unfortunately, I couldn't use the overlay in VR. So what I did was run the tests and here are the results. I'm not going to focus on all the options that the software gives you for benchmarking today, but I will go into this in more depth in the future. Today, we're just focusing on the average FPS compared to those lowest one and 0.1 percentiles. You can see at the top, you've got the average FPS, which is 38.8. P1, which is the lowest 1% is 28.4. And P0.1 is the lowest 0.1%, which is 18.7. So you can see here, there's a huge difference between 38.8 and 18.7. It's really important to remember that that 0.1% is obviously a lot less significant than the 1% above it, which is 28.4. So the fact that there's about 10 frames per second difference between P1 and average is okay, but it could be a lot better. These are the results that I hope improve over the coming updates. And you can see the pie chart here is showing the smoothness, the low FPS readings, and any stuttering that's occurred. So it's a great tool to see all these different statistics in one place. Again, I'm not gonna spend much time on the software today. I just want to show you some readings that I'm getting based on my experience in VR with the latest settings I'm using. If you do want to test your own system, I definitely recommend checking out CapFrameX. It's a free download and it's proving to be a really useful tool. And I'll leave a link in the description. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a tutorial on this software too, for future reference. From running this test, I can really see it will help me dial in the VR better, and I look forward to using it over the coming weeks with update six. I'm satisfied with the performance, and I really do find the whole sim in VR impressive despite its flaws. How about you? Are you satisfied with VR in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 so far? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't checked out my sim update six preview yet, you can check it out here, as well as my best settings for the Icon A5 in VR, which I highly recommend if you use this aircraft in the sim. As always, I hope you find this content useful. I look forward to making the next video soon. In the meantime, as always, take care, stay safe, and bring on update six.